Hey, thanks for joining us. 5-9 Radio here. Michael, KC9PHK, presenting sub-element T9, also known as the Technician Class Amateur Radio Question Pool. Sub-element T9 has two exam questions, which come from the two groups located in T9. We're resuming here with antennas and feed lines. T9A says antennas, vertical and horizontal polarization, concept of antenna gain, definition and types of beam antennas, antenna loading, common portable and mobile antennas, relationships between resonant length and frequency, and dipole pattern. T9A01, what is a beam antenna? That answer is an antenna that concentrates signals in one direction. T9A02, which of the following describes a type of antenna loading? And that's A, electrically lengthening by inserting inductors in radiating elements. T9A03, which of the following describes a simple dipole oriented parallel to the Earth's surface? That is a horizontally polarized antenna. T9A04, which is a disadvantage of the short, flexible antenna supplied with most handheld transceivers compared to a full-sized quarter-wave antenna. Also, sometimes called a rubber duck, the antenna has low efficiency. A. It has low efficiency. T9A05, which of the following increases the resonant frequency of a dipole antenna? Shortening it. T9A06, which of the following types of antennas offers the greatest gain? A Yagi. T9A07, what is the disadvantage of using a handheld VHF transceiver with a flexible antenna inside a vehicle? The signal strength is reduced due to the shielding effect of the vehicle. T9A08, what is the approximate length in inches of a quarter wavelength vertical antenna for 146 megahertz? That's 19, 19 inches. T9A09, what is the approximate length in inches of a half wave length 6 meter dipole antenna? That is 112 inches, 112 inches. T9A10, in which direction does it, a half wave dipole antenna radiate the strongest signal? Broadside to the antenna. T9A11, what is antenna gain? Antenna gain is the increase in signal strength in a specified direction compared to a reference antenna. T9A12, what is the advantage of a 5 8 wavelength whip antenna for VHF or UHF mobile service? It has more gain than a quarter wavelength antenna. T9B covers feed lines, types, attenuation versus frequency, selecting, SWR concepts, antenna tuners, couplers, RF connectors, selecting, and weather protection. T9B01, what is a benefit of low SWR? And that's reduced signal loss. T9B02, what is the most common impedance of coaxial cables used in amateur radio? 50 ohms, 50 ohms. T9B03, why is coaxial cable the most common feed line for amateur radio antenna systems? It is easy to use and requires few special installation considerations. T9B04, what is the major function of an antenna tuner or antenna coupler? It matches the antenna system impedance to the transceiver's output impedance. T9B05, what happens as the frequency of a signal in coaxial cable is increases? Increased. And that causes the loss to increase. The loss increases. T9B06, which of the following RF connector types is most suitable for frequencies above 400 megahertz? That's type N. Type N. T9B07, which of the following is true of PL259 type coax connectors? They are commonly used at HF and VHF frequencies. T9B08, which of the following is a source of loss in coaxial feed line? All of these choices are correct. So water intrusion into coaxial connectors, high SWR, and multiple connectors in the line. T9B09, what can cause erratic changes in SWR? Loose connection in the antenna or feed line. T9B10, 
what is the electrical difference between RG58 and RG213 coaxial cable? RG213 has less loss at a given frequency. T9B11, which of the following types of feed line has the lowest loss at VHF and UHF? That's air insulated hard line. T9B12, what is standing wave ratio, also known as SWR? That's a measure of how well a load is matched to a transmission line. Subelement T0 covers safety. Three exam questions come from the three groups. First off, T0A. Power circuits and hazards, hazardous voltages, fuses and circuit breakers, grounding, electrical code compliance, lightning protection, and battery safety. T0A01, which of the following is a safety hazard of a 12-volt storage battery? Shorting the terminals can cause burns, fire, or an explosion. T0A02, what health hazard is presented by electrical current flowing through the body? It may cause injury by heating tissue. It may disrupt the electrical functions of cells. It may cause involuntary muscle contractions. All of those. TA0, T0A04, what is the purpose of a fuse in an electrical circuit? That's to remove power in case of overload. T0A05, why should a 5 ampere fuse never be replaced with a 20 ampere fuse? That answer is, excessive current could cause a fire. T0A06, what is a good way to guard against electrical shock at your station? And that is all of the choices are correct. So use three wire cords and plugs on all AC powered equipment. Connect all AC powered station equipment to a common safety ground and install mechanical interlocks in high voltage circuits. T0A07, what should a lightning arrest, where should a lightning arrestor be installed in a coaxial feed line? On a grounded panel near where the feed line entered the building. T0A08, where should a fuse or circuit breaker be installed in a 120 volt AC power circuit? That's in series with the hot conductor only. TA, T0A09, what should be done to all external ground rods or earth connections? You should bond them together with heavy wire or conductive strap. T0A10, what hazard is caused by charging or discharging a battery too quickly? Overheating or outgassing. T0A11, what hazard exists in a power supply immediately after turning it off? That's charge stored in the filter capacitors. T0A12, which of the following precautions should be taken when measuring high voltages with a voltmeter? You should ensure that the voltmeter and leads are rated for use at the voltages to be measured. T0B covers antenna safety, tower safety, and grounding, installing antennas and antenna supports. T0B01, which of the following is a good practice when installing ground wires on a tower for lightning protection? Ensure that the connections are short and direct. T0B02, what is required when climbing an antenna tower? You should have sufficient training on safe tower climbing techniques. Use appropriate tie-off to the tower at all times. Always wear an approved climbing harness. All of those are correct. T0B03, under what circumstances is it safe to climb a tower without a helper or observer? And that answer is never. Never climb alone. T0B04, which of the following is an important safety precaution to observe when putting up an antenna tower? You should look for and stay clear of any overhead electrical wires. T0B05, which, what is the purpose of a safety wire through a turnbuckle used to tension guy lines? And that's to prevent loosening of the turnbuckle from vibration. T0B06, what is the minimum safe distance from a power line to allow when installing an antenna? And that is enough so that if the antenna falls, no part of it can come closer than 10 feet to the power wires. T0B07, which of the following is an important safety rule to remember when using a crank up tower? This type of tower must not be climbed unless it is retracted or mechanical safety locking devices have been installed. T0B08, which is a proper grounding method for a tower. 
That would be to separate separate eight foot ground rods for each tower leg bonded to the tower and each other. T0B09, why should you avoid attaching an antenna to a utility pole? The antenna could contact high voltage power lines. T0B10, which of the following is true when installing grounding conductors used for lightning protection? Sharp bends must be avoided. T0B11, which of the following establishes grounding requirements for an amateur radio tower or antenna? And that would be local electrical codes. T0C covers RF hazards, radiation exposure, proximity to antennas, recognize safe power levels, radiation types, and duty cycles. T0C01, what type of radiation are radio signals? That is non-ionizing radiation. T0C02, at which of the following frequencies does maximum permissible exposure have the lowest value? That's 50 megahertz. T0C03, how does the allowable power density of RF safety change if duty cycle changes from 100% to 50%? It increases by a factor of 2. T0C04, what factors affect the RF exposure of people near an amateur station antenna? That is, frequency and power level of the RF field, distance from the antenna to a person, radiation pattern of the antenna. All of those are correct. T0C05, why do exposure limits vary with frequency? The human body absorbs more RF energy at some frequencies than others. T0C06, which of the following is an acceptable method to determine whether your station complies with FCC RF exposure regulations? And that is, all of these are correct. So by calculations based on FCC OET Bulletin 65, by calculation based on computer modeling, or by measurement of field strength using calibrated equipment. T0C07, what hazard is created by touching an antenna during a transmission? That's RF burns to the skin. T0C08, which of the following actions can reduce exposure to RF radiation? Relocating antennas. Relocate antennas. T0C09, how can you make sure your station stays in compliance with RF safety regulations? By reevaluating the station whenever an item in the transmitter or antenna system is changed. T0C10, why is the duty cycle of one of the factors used to determine safe RF exposure levels? It affects the average exposure to radiation. T0C11, what is the definition of duty cycle during the averaging time for RF exposure? The percentage of time that the transmitter is transmitting. T0C12, how does RF radiation differ from ionizing radiation or radioactivity? RF radiation does not have sufficient energy to cause chemical changes in cells and damage DNA. T0C13, who is responsible for ensuring that no person is exposed to RF energy above the FCC exposure limits? The station licensee. All right, that concludes this video. Hopefully you followed along. Keep on studying. Hopefully when you get to your exam, you'll remember all the answers. You'll remember the questions. You'll pass that exam and get licensed. We have the general and the extra class licenses similarly, and we'll try to keep those updated. Thank you for joining us at 5.9 Radio. Again, be sure you're subscribed, you're liking our videos, you're commenting, you're letting us know what you like, what you don't like, so we can build future videos. Uh, this is Michael, KC9PHK, out.